17th century, New England. A family moves to an isolated home in the woods to live a pure, peaceful, godly life, free from the sin and the corruption that had infected their village. Give us the sins we have this day committed against thee. Free us from the shame and torment which are due unto us, Father. But the family soon come to realise that there's something else living in the woods. Something that's far from pure. Something rotten. Something that, slowly but surely, is going to rip their family apart, piece by piece. Join me as we continue exploring the evolution of folk horror, and we begin to unpick Robert Eggers' New England folktale, The Witch. Welcome back to the Evolution of Horror. My name is Mike, and as ever, I am your host. If you're tuning in for the first time, then welcome. In this podcast, we explore and dissect the evolution of the horror genre by looking at particular subgenres across several weeks. We are currently in the midst of exploring the evolution of folk horror, and this is part 12, in which, as the intro suggested, we are going to be looking at that 2015 horror movie, Robert Eggers' The Vit. Uh, so this is your spoiler warning we will be talking about the witch in detail including that iconic ending so if you haven't seen the witch i would urge you to go away seek it out and watch it it's really quite a film love it or hate it it's always going to be a movie that you're going to remember so i really would recommend giving it a watch and then coming back now before we get started on our discussion here are a few contact details don't forget you can email us the email address is evolution of horror at gmail.com you can find us on twitter Twitter at Evolution Pod or on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash evolution of horror. We are also now on Instagram for some reason at the evolution of horror. And you can also find us on Letterboxd, and that's where you'll find the latest news of what films we're going to be covering in the future on the podcast. That's at Evolution Pod. Uh, soon enough, I'm going to be revealing what subgenre of horror we'll be covering in the next series. So if you want to find that out and start preparing, start doing your homework, start tracking down some titles, I would suggest following us on those social media platforms and you'll be the first to find out. But let's get started. We've got lots of sinful things to discuss this week. So joining me to discuss all things The Witch, back for her third time on the podcast, the absolutely brilliant Louise Blaine. Louise, hello. Hello, Mike. How are you? I am good. It's lovely to see you again. It's nice to be back in this very small room. (laughs) It's very small room. And and actually, there's something wrong with the light bulb in in here. And it's like very, very dark. Not only is it uh, quite warm, it's now like shadowy and dim and quite quite fitting in but a way. It's quite like we've put in a hue bulb and set it to the <laughs> yes. evolution of horror setting. Yes, exactly. That's fine. It's, uh, I'm expecting it to start sort of blinking on that's and fine. off or something yeah. at some point. Flickering neons, that's what we need. I know, I know. So first of all, before we get into stuff, tell me what you've been up to because you've, you, you're you everywhere at the moment, it feels like, which is exciting. Uh, last time you were here, you were working on Games Radar, but you're yes. not anymore, are you? No, I am a YouTube producer for the Logitech G. YouTube channel. So I work for a company called Dialect and uh, I write and present lots of videos about uh, video games. So that's my my day to day is is talking about video games as ever and just in a different way. So doing on video and constantly saying like and subscribe. So do like and do subscribe. So for yeah. Logitech G, so exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, uh, and and you're going to be on BBC. Well, and you are regularly on BBC yeah. Radio. So I get to be on BBC Radio Scotland every Monday. I'm okay, Adam. Show uh, talking about tech, which is a lot of fun. So I get so to have cool. fingers in many pies. Many which pies. Is nice. Do you? You must be very busy. Ha- do you still find time to watch horror films? Crucially? Absolutely. Oh yeah, totally. I think I think everyone that listens to this podcast watches horror. Yes. As a sort of comfort thing. Yes. I still do that. Yes. I still absolutely do that. It's like it's been a long day and you want to do something so you say down to a horror I know. film and also we're in such a time of wonderful horror amazing like, horror and it's nice I was writing for Sci-Fi Now magazine about the strangers pray at night and yes. a quiet place so thankfully I'm still getting to even yes. though I'm not a GR anymore I'm getting to get my keep my hand in in horror writing what's been your favourite thing that you've seen this year so far do you think oh, you say? oh. I mean a quiet place was pretty damn good wasn't you it you know it was this year that I watched the ritual on streaming wasn't yes it? and i love the ritual which we are going to be talking about on this podcast in a couple of weeks yeah yeah because yeah, it's obviously folk, folk horror, horror and all yeah, that kind that's of thing been, yeah that has been a lovely surprise it's great me, wasn't actually. it what about hereditary what did you think of oh, hereditary? oh my god so, <laughs> <laughs> so 
hereditary i was fortunate enough to be at e3 this year the big gaming convention yes and i was in la early and i was jet lagged to hell and i was in a hotel at half past six at night and i thought i could just go to sleep <laughs> but i also couldn't just go to sleep because oh, it was half God. past six and i thought so i'll go out so yeah. i went out and la live has a lovely big cinema mm-hmm. and it's one of those wonderful american cinemas where you can get things like fried chicken oh my god so you go in the door and you're like this smells amazing. I don't know whether that is awful it or incredible. Like butter and salt <laughs> and chicken. And I was yes. like, this is like the smell they pump into cinemas yeah, in the is. UK that seems slightly fake. <laughs> yeah. But there it was very real. And in that very real cinema, I went to see Hereditary on my own. Oh my God. What did um, you think? I, it was an experience. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard to know what to say about that film I came, sometimes. I came out of that film absolutely reeling. I felt like someone had hit me around the face with yeah. that film. I felt panicked. I felt as if I wasn't safe. Yeah. And I'll also tell you what I felt was, turns out in America, you can take children to see R-rated films. Yes. So when they first came in, this family with a little girl and a giant tub of popcorn, oh. I thought, hey, maybe they've just, you know, missed whatever the kids' film is. Yeah. No, they just settled down. So when I left Hereditary, after feeling genuinely that there was a girl next to me who was also by herself, yeah. and in my head, I pretended that she was my friend and we just didn't talk. <laughs> yeah, you're in it together. <laughs> I was like, yeah. she's with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when I left with my fake friend yeah. in front of me, not talking to me, <laughs> um, I was very focused on that little girl's head. Yeah. I was like, what has gone in there? Uh. Because... I am still, obviously we're not going to be spoilery for any of it, but I was reacting so badly to all of that. I didn't expect it. I I didn't expect it. I really didn't. The latter third of that film, I felt genuinely panicked. (laughs) And I've got some friends and we're in a horror WhatsApp and they'd seen it at exactly the same time as me. Yes. And we swear on this podcast, don't we? Oh, yeah. So the the WhatsApp group was just, oh, fuck. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. That is... <laughs> no. Yes, yes. Yes, so that was my response to Hereditary. Yeah. You know, very, you know, there's a critical analysis for you. I love fuck. it. Oh, fuck. I mean, that is... I, mean, I talked about it on this podcast with Anna from the BFI, and that was pretty much all we could say. Yeah. We were just like, holy fucking shit. And that bit, holy fucking shit. That, and that bit. And that bit. <laughs> and oh, oh boy, that bit. Yeah. Oh, no, now I feel like I'm literally in a car with yeah. a driver who I do not trust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... we're going over that cliff edge at any point. Exactly. There was so much... Oh. There's so much in that film. Too. I know, I know, oh. I know, I know. We'll go to the pub afterwards and yes, we'll discuss we'll talk it. About it. Yeah, then. brilliant. Um, okay, so last time you were here, obviously, we were talking about ghosts and all that kind of thing, The Shining, The Conjuring. Now we're talking about folk horror, which is quite a strange one. I've had this conversation with everyone so far. It's kind of, you know, everyone agrees it's a re- it's a weird, difficult thing to define folk horror. I mean, what are your thoughts on folk horror? Um, first of all, how would you define it? What do you think a folk horror movie is? Well. I've been cheating because I've obviously listened okay, yes, to the yes, podcast yes. up until that point. But I think before that, and I think you and I spoke about it at Christmas last year, mm-hmm. or when, whenever was it, the Blood and Satan's Claw audiobook, whenever yes. that was. So I listened yes. to that and I didn't really have an idea of folk horror before, mm. obviously. I think it actually comes into it in that I love the Blair Witch Project. Mm-hmm. So I guess how I define folk horror is going out of your comfort zone, leaving your leaving everything that is safe yes. and going out into the world. And yes. funnily enough, there is an exact line in the film that we're going to be talking about today, mm. which I believe entirely encompasses folk horror mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. that we are, you know, that we aren't going to let this beat us. Yes. This natural world. Yes. And whether that natural world is the natural world itself, whether it's animalistic mm-hmm. or whether mm-hmm. it's something darker mm-hmm. or whether it's the people that have been there much longer than you have. Yes. I think... It's that. Yes. Folk horror is leaving safety behind, packing your car, leaving mobile phone. We joke about it, but leaving mobile phone signal behind, Mm -hmm. leaving everything you know behind. Mm -hmm. You're not next to a plug point. You're not next to something safe. You're away from your Wi-Fi. You are out there. And folk horror is what comes to get you. What went we out into this wilderness to find? Leaving our country, kindred, our father's houses. For what? For the kingdom of God. Let us pray. So The Witch is set in 1630 as a family uh, is 
sort of banished from their New England settlement and to go out into the woods. So it's a, a mother and father and their, oh gosh, one, two, three, four, five children. So it's a baby, two twins and a boy and girl, uh, a girl played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who plays Thomason, which I find astonishing. I know we're putting in here, I, I'm interjecting in the synopsis no, cool. here. I cannot believe that was her first credited role. Incredible, yeah. She Just incredible. is, and, and we probably there's probably a slot a little bit later to talk exactly about her, but I will say now, she is exceptional. She really she, from is. From the moment that film starts, and we'll probably talk about later how exactly how it looks, but she is just this absolute presence. She's mesmerising, uh-huh. yeah. She is not just, not in just how she looks, because obviously Anya Taylor-Joy is very, very striking. Mm. Uh, her eyes and her cheekbones and everything. Mm-hmm. Everything you look at her face is, is astonishing. Yeah. But there is an intensity and a strength to yeah. her that makes her look much bigger than she is on screen. It does yes. not matter what, uh, we'll talk about the costumes a bit later on, because I think that's important as well. But she is something oh, God. she is just you know from the get-go that she is the central point of this film yep 100 percent. so obviously they go into the woods and they attempt to have a life mm-hmm. but as what happens when people go out into the woods things don't go entirely according to plan the um the the crops start to turn they are yes. starving they cannot catch animals um obviously there's a the, and then there's the <laughs> In the first nine minutes, Mike, I can't oh get over this. In God. the first nine minutes, a peekaboo sequence results in a baby being taken. Mm. And then we're going to talk about what happens to the baby. Yeah. A horrible. Oh. I, I, it is. Um, because I think, that, and this is the thing, we'll, we'll get into this, but I think this is the thing that shocks people about this film is that you, you, I think you get an impression from the look and the feel of this movie that it's going to be very much a kind of restrained, yes. what you don't see. Absolutely. Will it, re- will it really be about a witch or will it be about, you know, whatever, their paranoia? Yeah, darkness no, inside people. Within the first nine minutes, you see this old hag kill, slice a baby up, mash it into nothingness, puree, yeah. puree, smear it over her skin yeah. in the woods. You know, it's like, oh, okay, no, this really is. Yeah. It's laying all these cards out on the table yeah, straight this away. Does not mess around. Yeah. It does not. I mean, it was the fact, I think I stopped. I think I was about to message you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I paused it and I was like, that just says nine minutes 40. It's amazing. That all took place in nine minutes. And that's the thing that kind of, again, I baffles me when people talk about this film being in some way not horror or elevated or you know i don't understand it's like or a lot of people have said you know oh it's barely even a horror it's more of a drama and stuff is it is i mean it? the, the no. witch cut slicing up a baby that's the- just so that people can justify or enjoying it that's yeah. all they ever do yeah i have yeah. a serious problem people when they say oh, it's not horror that elevated horror nonsense it's oh, nonsense and, oh. and it feels like that conversation really happened around this film in particular yeah i and remember the conversation a quiet place a quiet place yeah um and and yeah i i really i don't understand it and actually and you know a lot of people had the reaction as well where the movie ended and people were like and i know that the end will get to the end and it does divide people a bit but um again people are kind of shocked that oh it did all turn out to be about a witch you know and there was no reveal that there it wasn't and i was like but what it's it it does set it all up straight Uh away Oh, absolutely from the get-go yeah i mean you literally see that the whole so that I, i read about it um recently it's the it's a i want to say it's called an undian mm-hmm. and that's what she's making out mm-hmm. of the baby because basically it was said that uh, witches made this goop out of pre non-baptized babes yes and smeared themselves with it so they could fly that was their brilliant that was what they would do so that that was why they flew And obviously there's that incredible shot in the first nine minutes of behind her and you know that she's about to fly. Yes. Literally on a broomstick. Yes, incredible. With all of the strangeness and the weirdness that comes with it. So it's not like a traditional broom. No. It's also, uh, there's a lot of suggestion around that, which is obviously what's around witches in general. It's like the sort of, whether they were actually riding the brooms in the sense that we think, you know, children ride brooms at Halloween or whether it's something quite different. So there's all of that in this very charged, very naked, very visceral, nasty, horrible, like even the motion with which she is literally grinding up the child. Oh my God. I mean, the fact that anyone says that it's not a horror film, it is deeply affecting. (laughs) 
do you like this film? Are you a fan? So, mm. here's the interesting thing. Mm-hmm. I saw a preview of The Witch and lots of people had said before it, scariest film of all time. You yep. know, it came with all that yep. hereditary style hype. Yep. Yep. And when I watched it, mm. I was waiting for the scary to be, bits. To be afraid. Yeah. And I never got it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think, uh, not in that people, it is, a, it is scary. There's mm. obviously bits quite later on in the film that are scary and yes. intense, but I didn't appreciate them enough mm-hmm. I don't, at the time. But then watching it for the second time, mm-hmm. I knew that I felt something. Mm. I didn't know what I felt. Yes. <laughs> so watching it for the second time, it was a completely different journey. Mm-hmm. I appreciated all of it. And I know I really, really like it. Yes. Well, so I was al- almost, I wasn't, Erring on the side of not liking it, yeah. but I was also a bit kind of what's a, the big hype I about? Think, what have you, what have you sold me on, and what have I got? Yeah, and it's about mashing those two things up together. When actually a film can be destroyed on expectations, when actually what's there is is wonderful and visceral and, mm. and exceptionally disturbing, and this tightly packed ball of blah. yeah, absolutely. I, th- I yeah, I think that's so true, and it's it, we've seen it happen this year with Hereditary as well. People yeah. massively disappointed yeah. about that. It's it's the it's the hype, and these movies, are, this these are the ones that get accused of being elevated genre. Yeah, these these aren't uh, like a James Wan movie. They yeah. aren't going to give you what you expect. They're not yeah. going to throw jump scares at you or anything yeah. like that. They are slow burns, and I suppose they're not always conventionally frightening. No. Um, no, they don't follow that formula. Uh, but, but you're right. I think sometimes when you then know second time around what you're in for, yeah. you can suddenly go, oh, I this is what this film yeah, is. Yeah, so even yeah. from the very beginning, uh, it comes up with, obviously, The Witch, um, a New England folktale. Yes. And that is what it is. It's exactly what that it is. is. It says, it's very Ron Seal, it does exactly what it says on the yeah, tin. Yeah, yeah. It says that from the get-go. You so, know what the witch is. So, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you make of that? The fact that it calls itself a folk tale, and it kind of again, it kind of lays that out. From it the lays beginning. out, and it tells you that something is. It automatically sets your ex- expectations. Mm-hmm. A folk tale, you know, can have supernatural elements. Yes. A folk tale, you know, is almost like a. It's a mythical passed down the ages yes sort of way so it automatically suggests a lot of things in your head of, mm. of what you're about to get and mm-hmm. it never disappoints on that it, it doesn't a, no and tale almost. exactly fairy tale quite simple really i yeah, mean it is like simple. it is a very it is you know you could sum up the plot in a couple of sentences really it's just like a family going to the woods there's a witch in the woods and they all die one although by i one, didn't although basically. i didn't get that far I, I <laughs> yeah, got a, so you you can we sum it up you can sum it up in a couple of words <laughs> but louise didn't so that's what's important <laughs> but you know it is um um, it, it's so simple and yet as I'm sure we're going to find there is so much to unpick oh, in it as well there's yes. so much going on and I feel like I think I've seen it three or four times now and I feel like I appreciate it on a new level every time I yeah. watch it I yeah. will watch it again very soon yeah I really um, it's one of my favourites of recent years like yeah. it, it would okay. be up there for me like in terms of like mo- and we we've, were just saying what an amazing wave of horror movies it's been these last few years because you were appalled at was it Brad that was telling saying they didn't like oh it. my god appalled <laughs> Um, but I know so many people that hate it and I, I kind of get I get it a little bit it's like what you were saying with your first experience of it it's you know it's not the horror film that a lot of people maybe want it to be or yeah. think it's going to be yeah. um, and I don't know it's hard to explain why but it got me from the first time I watched it I watched it at a London Film Festival and absolutely terrified me and in the, the screening I was at it was like you could hear a pin drop it was just pure same with hereditary just pure fear and dread yeah. you know like everyone just kind of not breathing for for 90 minutes it felt like yeah we travailed a vast ocean for what for what we must ask thee to be silent was it not for the pure and faithful dispensation of the gospels so then as the story begins then and we get this kind of straight away it's kind of like whoa when it starts because of the way it looks and the way the characters talk as well um it feels like again it's kind of you are being really lumped in 17th century yeah. new england aren't you it's yeah. like everything about and i think again we talked about this with a lot of folk horror is that everything feels super super authentic doesn't yeah. it that's what's quite amazing about it i think they kind of said it was a the puritan's nightmare mm-hmm. and and from the very get-go you have what you would imagine people to look like so you're in this yes. you're in this town hall yes and they're saying you aren't you know you're not you're not staying here yeah you're off basically yeah but the way everything looks mm-hmm. is so i think as, as well watching it at home i was finding i was really appreciating every texture yes. of every costume yes it was so genuine it's incredible and I think th- even that tiny scene in that when they're being sort of 
kicked out basically is you can feel that time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't see anyone else there, right? That's the only time you see yeah, other people. Yeah. That's the only time you see other people. Yeah. And as that first, you feel like it's the first shot of them, but it's not, but it's a, it's a static shot of them riding off yes. into the woods. Yes. And they get smaller and smaller. Yeah. And actually last night when I was watching it, I realised that there were big bars mm-hmm. at either side of my screen. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So mm. then I obviously had to stop. And it turns out it was filmed in, I want to say, 1 to 66 to 1. So it was made in that really interesting, yes. quite rare format. Yeah. Because they wanted the height of the trees to matter. Oh. Because it means in that first shot... Those looming those, tr- those trees are mm. enormous. And it's because that shot is chopped in at the sides. And oh. they fit perfectly in that. But it was just the fact I was like... I'm going to need to pause this and then I'm going to need to talk about this with Mike. (laughs) It's incredible. It's astonishing. And I think that's the thing, like the level of detail in this film, like you say, the the textures, the costumes. So Robert Eggers, this was his first, his feature debut. It's like hereditary all over again. Yeah, yeah. And the Babadook, again, some some of these incredible films are all first time directors. Uh, Robert Eggers came from a production design background and you can just so tell, can't you, that this film is like, he apparently put up, I think it was five years of prep into this film in terms of getting he like he filmed some of it in Canada, but he had to get a um, a thatch a roof thatcher who worked in Pennsylvania, who was the only person that knew how to do these specific roofs on the houses. Everything was built to the like everything was studied to the nth degree. The the uh, language used is exactly you know taken from source text from yes. the seventeenth century. You know all of that kind of thing. It's like he wanted it to be as as absolutely genuine as possible. Um, apparently, he originally intended not to have a score because he thought that would make it, it would take you out of it. Right. Again, he just wanted to be like you were watching real life happen or something in the six in the seventeenth century. But yeah. uh, but he decided it needed it. But then even the score oh. is all made up of instruments yes. that would have been played back then, you yes. know, and, and, and the, choral sort of. And yeah. that score, <gasps> that score just gets you. It's just, it's deeply unpleasant. It really. Puts I mean, it's the, really the hairs on the back of my neck. It is yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and and again, it's that it's that feeling of like. I'm now scared and I don't know why. You know, just that moment when they yeah. are heading towards the woods and you get that shot of the trees and that, yeah. that choral music yes. kicking. It's like, oh, that's, that, this, is, this isn't going well. No, this that's is it. Good. This is not good. Yeah. This is not going to go well. Yeah. I mean, that must be in three minutes in. Yeah. If everything happened in the first nine minutes, that must be in three <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. There's definitely. also really something about um. Oh gosh, why is his name gone from my head? His voice, the father. Yes, jo- John. Um, was it John. W- so William, played by Ralph Innocent. Ralph Innocent. That's mm. it. And his voice. Yes. Oh my god. Is resonant yeah. and it feels like it's pulling you into history. There's something about his 100%. voice. It's so it's it's so deep. It's almost subwoofery yeah, at times. Absolutely. Well. It's the kind of sort of rumble. It's yeah. the kind of rumble that gets you in the heart yeah. when you're at gigs. And it's something that, and also the accents in it as well. Yes, the accents are incredible. Amazing. Obviously, Kate Dickey is Scottish. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, hear, yeah, you, yeah. Sometimes I can only hear it because I am Scottish. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. But the accents in it are so evocative, yeah. and the the language used is so. And Anya Taylor Joy as well. I mean, she doesn't sound Amazing. like that. It's She's incredible. incredible. It's so good. Again, they must have put so much prep into. I feel like I feel like everything was so. Uh, you know prepared and and practiced and rehearsed yeah. it feels very detailed every yes. element of it doesn't yeah. it and i'd love my work disobedient to my parents neglectful of my prep i have in secret played upon thy sabbath and broken every one of thy commandments and thought how do you find the language in it i mean does it is it off-putting is it uh, uh, in any way does it make it more alienating or difficult to kind of penetrate? No, I think it does the opposite, actually. I mm. think if you had characters that looked like that and dressed mm. like that and felt like that, yeah. and you had them talking to them talking to each other like you and I are just now, yeah. I think you would have a problem. And I think yeah. when I was watching it last night, you find that even though they are talking in, in, in a very specific way, mm. they still have all the problems of a modern family. Yes. So they're standing outside the house and they're niggling at each other and they're saying, oh, you know, leave your father alone. The brother yeah. and sister, you know, the, the, the sister's t- telling off the, the twins. Yeah. And the twins won't stop. And then even the fact that she turns around and tells them to shut up, then Thomason has to. And there's yeah. there's this very 
modern, it doesn't matter that it's in 1630 or 2018. No. Families still have the problems of families now. So actually, mm -hmm. despite their sometimes language that you go, oh, well, that was what they just say. That's what they just said. Yeah. It actually brings you further in because it makes them even more relatable because 100%. they are just a family and they, they are, are just a family that's going through some serious problems. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know, I, I wonder if it's easier for us, like for British audiences, because I know I've listened to a couple of American podcasts reviewing it and they were like, oh, it's hard to, you've got to, you know, that, that, I, I, the, the, between the, between the northern accents and the way they talk, yeah. I think for an American audience, it's like, what are they saying? You know, a lot of the time, that, yeah. which I can understand totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you, your ear just needs to adjust. It's like watching Shakespeare or something, isn't it? Mm. It's like sometimes it will take you five, ten minutes before you kind of get to grips of what. But then what, you're there. Yeah, and you're yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're in it. Um, yeah, so then obviously, so we've got that minor setup where we get a few extra characters, but then, like you say, probably by about the three minute mark, yeah. they're on their own, they're in the oh. woods. Um, let's talk about these characters briefly then, because it is, it's all about this family, isn't yeah. it? Um, all, all of them incredible in different ways, I think, as well. Um, so, first of all, I mean, yeah, we've mentioned her briefly already, but Anya Taylor Joy as, as Thomas, and she really is extraordinary. She, isn't she? is just this. I, I, watching it, I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, well, she's incredible. Yeah. And watching it last night, I was like, well, she's even better. Yeah. Because she is constantly at the, there's interesting sort of interpersonal relationships between her and her mother. Yes. Obviously, there's a lot of, she thinks that she's stolen the cup. Yeah. She hasn't stolen the cup, but actually the father sold the cup and mm -hmm. not talked about it and let her take, you know, the rap for it, mm -hmm. which is, and she, knows that she hasn't done it so there's and there's a lot of whether she should be looking after the children and then it's also that the centers on the fact that it was when she was playing peekaboo with the baby yes that the baby was gone so whether she does it or not she is blamed mm -hmm. it is her fault mm. and then she's the one who takes caleb into the woods exactly and then disappears. it's her and then that's her yeah. fault as well and it's actually like yeah. i kind of love the the interplay between them while he was trying to leave he's like no no I'm, you're not coming with me I'll be back before 12 yeah and she is that is there's also a lot of comedy in it there which is I did not see the first time yeah but the comedy of the moment is like well if you don't let me come then I'll wake you know mother and father right now and then it cuts to them in the forest yeah and you're yeah. like bah, that's exactly what a sister would do it is really funny and there's a there's a moment again when they towards the end when it starts getting really hysterical and then they start to talk you know they start talking seriously about is the goat evil yes and then and and uh and william ralph innocent actually laughs you know he's, uh -huh. he's at this moment where his son has just died you yep. know this is it's all everything is so uh sort of high octane and then he just he bursts into laughter yeah. at that they're actually really really discussing is the goat the devil basically but there's even the comedy of the fact that when the when caleb and thomason both go missing yes and you cut to the house and it's dark and they're shouting and they've tied the kids to the fence yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, <laughs> so it's, good. it's like these um we'll get onto the kids in just a second but oh my those God. In fact, can we bring? Can, have you got any other characters to talk about? Or can we go to the twins? Let's please go. Oh to my the god, twins. the twins! The twins absolutely crack me up. <laughs> They're amazing. They are. They are simultaneously funny and terrifying at and the same awful time. And yeah, really <laughs> annoying, but also wonderful. These little uh, the the casting of those children. Are just incredible. They're it's so astonishing. good, especially the girl. I think yeah. she's really good. These really little good. faces are they've just got this very specific look where they look simultaneously like children but mm -hmm. they've also been chosen for the fact that they look very much like adults as well yes. and they have them dressed in especially the little girl they're very um they're dressed in layers and layers these yes. petticoats and skirts and dresses yes yeah, really so, kind of puffy aren't yeah they, they yeah. look like those little old doll dolls that would go over stuff that's <laughs> they what do. they look like they do. so and she's got this little bonnet as well the little girl and literally <laughs> she's as wide as she is tall because yeah. of all the stuff they've got on yeah. but it makes them look like she looks like a little washerwoman she does she does exactly and he he looks like he should be in like a workhouse somewhere mm. But yeah. it does something weird with their height because obviously they're just kids. They're just kids. So they're running around as these almost, um, it makes them quite supernatural and ethereal because they run around and mm. they scurry and they sing and they dance. And yes. Obviously they're prancing around with Black Philip, the yes. goat. And th you, th there's already an uncertainty about them. I be not lazy. I be the witch of the wood. And I have come to steal you. Hear me stick a fly in through the trees. Clickety clackety. 
Yes, you already, we don't know. You know it. You're already, you're a suspicious all the way through this because they're like, you're the witch, you're the witch, maybe it's yeah. you, we speak to the goat. And it's yeah. like, who is? Because you all seem a bit wrong right now. <laughs> you're all a bit wrong. And the children, especially in the, the scene with the um, the sort of exorcism. Yeah, oh, God. Which yeah. I'm sure we'll go into in yeah. depth. but Because he's also brilliant. Caleb as well, played incredible. by Harvey Scrimshaw. He's brilliant How as well. Is he? just Yeah, it must be a, what, 12, 13 maybe. ridiculous. And again, it's like, I think all the ages are important to this in terms of this family, especially yeah. of the kids. You've got Anya Taylor-Joy's character, who obviously is she's becoming a woman. Yes. And, and really, is that what the whole film is really about, yes. isn't it? It yeah. is, you know changes happening to her yeah. and how society and her family deal with it. Yeah, basically. it's like when Ginger snaps, you know, exactly. the puberty and the and exactly. the, the, the fear of the fear of womanhood and yeah. the the like the fact that Caleb's noticing and he's yes. ashamed of himself. Well he's, he's also going through obviously changes. He's at yes. that age as well, isn't he? Where he's, he's like he's yeah. simultaneously a child but also a man. Mm-hmm. And the scene when he's in the woods and he has the giant gun. Yes. And the gun is twice the size of him and he's kind of scurrying around with it. Yes. You see this little boy with his dad's gun. Mm. And it's this kind of... Again, it's like these little miniature people yeah, running these around. these tiny people. These <laughs> yeah. tiny people. These tiny... Because of what the what the woods expects. Yeah. You know, and are we bringing... And there's obviously the very strong religious element. Yeah. Uh, hugely. Yeah. Um, but it's the fact of uh, um, children... The sort of the sins of the father and all yes. of these things, and, yes. and children growing up and teaching correctly, but also, I mean, the the idea of a of a young boy saying, "Is the missing baby in hell?" Oh, I mean, yeah, that that yeah. The fact that they've listened to and their actually, parents talk about this and, yes. and, and all this guilt and suffering, mm-hmm. and no wonder the the what happens happens. I mean, if you think about it. This is a disaster family. Yeah, this is not. It's, okay. it's, it's, there are so many things to unpick, isn't it? I don't. I almost don't know where to start. But it's yeah, true. It's, like the religious aspect. Um, again, you know, there's a lot. Of, there's some horror movies. You know, The Exorcist, for example, that's yeah. very much like good versus evil. You've yes. got God and the devil, the priest versus the devil. You know, whatever. Yeah. And it feels like again with folk horror, this is murkier waters. It's like, is this movie? Because even though this does have a quite simplistic folktale feel, I mean, do, what do you think this movie thinks of? religion, Christianity, these pious Puritan, you know, Christians? Well, I think the question is actually whether the ex- obviously we have the idea of a devil. Yes, exactly. If, 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 does thou want to live deliciously, mm-hmm. Mike? Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. Do you want the taste of butter? Yeah, we've got the actual devil. You've, if you've got the devil, yeah. you automatically mm. I always, you know, you, you have the balance. You assume. You, you assume that there's going to be another side yeah. to that. But it's whether that other side just ignores everyone yes or actually makes its presence known because you in the the sort of um the sequence where caleb comes back with the devil in him basically Mm -hmm. bewitched and he chokes up that apple yeah which again symbolism of the the, the symbolism of the apple there's lots of apples Mm. yeah there's lots of they go to look for apples they lie about looking for apples they find an apple with a bite out of it so that is also kind of taking back to the snow white fairy tale element yep. and simultaneously the the snake and, and all of that exactly, so, exactly. but I think you aren't quite sure whether he has been saved or whether he is mocking the idea of being saved yes. so there's that whole he wait, an extraordinary performance from a from such a young oh. such a young boy but he's lying there in this in this attic and something there's he's talking about kisses and they're talking about this prayer I think that was an mm-hmm. old 16th century prayer that um, Edgar specifically took from mm-hmm. somewhere um, and it's that question of is that the devil's mouth mocking the idea of saviour yeah. or has he been saved yes and I err on this side of the former yes I <laughs> at think all so. times I think so it's a, it's a mocking yeah. devil not a sa- not a not a, a releasing god yeah spread over me the lap of thy love Wash me in the ever-flowing fountains of thy blood. Holy thine I am, my sweet Lord Jesus. My Lord, my love, kiss me with the kisses of thy mouth. And you're right, you know, the fact that the the devil clearly is present in this film uh, suggests you think there would be some sort of God, but also it feels like such a godless film. Again, he he cited Robert Eggers um, as inspiration, The Shining, for one thing, which you can tell just in the atmosphere, but but also... um, 
Ingmar Bergman. And we talked about some Ingmar Bergman films on this series and again how he portrays this like godless nihilistic world in which yeah. men are evil to other men and there is no hope and there is no god basically yeah. and there it, there's a real feeling of that in this uh-huh. i think yeah, as well, there's, there's there? a darkness and also what there's also a sort of seeding of other suggestions which we what we see and what we get are two different things yes but the idea of the corn mm-hmm. is rotting yeah but it's rotting with a very specific fungus and i can't is it ingot or ergot it's basically oh, yeah. a type of fungus yeah it's hallucinogenic ah interesting. so it is seeding the idea of hallucinogens and ah. whether the rest of the film is actually legitimate. That's, that's really so interesting. So there's an interesting reading. Yeah. But Eggers himself has said, like, that's what's in the corn. That's so interesting. But at the same time, I, I mean, I don't think... I think it's very much... I think there is a devil at work. Yeah, but, but again, a, but a teasing devil. Yeah, that's really interesting because yeah, that funnily enough, that kind of links to what we talked about last week. We were talking about Ben Wheatley's folk movies and a field in England and how mm. that is all about eating mm-hmm. of the mushrooms and yes. hallucinating yes. for an hour and a half, basically. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. But Robert, again, you know whether or not you take this film literally as well. You know, uh, I was Rosie Fletcher had a really interesting theory about it. I was talking to her about it the other day, and she said. She thinks that the whole thing, it, it lays its card on the table about being a folk tale. Yeah. And she thinks that the only part that is real is the beginning, where they are told they're excommunicated and right. they go to the village. And then there's that moment when you hear the big choral singing come in yes. and you see the trees and then it cuts to black. And then yes. everything from that point onwards is what the villagers tell the story of, of what happened to this family, ah. this this awful family who they got rid of, and this and this is what became of them. Well, that completely links into that folktale idea of yeah. it is something that is passed on through generations. Yes. It's like, how do people know that story if they weren't there? Exactly. You know, if something is a folktale, how do they know? Yeah. So the amount of fiction in there and the amount of reality, Yeah. but regardless of whether it's real or fake, Mm-hmm you feel every part of it as you, you do through. you do and again it, it like what's really interesting is like we talked about this with blood on satan's claw as well like it almost feels like it's so authentic that it almost feels like it, this film was made in the 1700s like had 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 these people these village folk been able to make a film and tell a folk tale of what happened to this family this is what we're seeing it would have been this uh, the, all the instruments are made out of things at the time you know yeah. the props the set design it's all authentic it's like we're really seeing what th- this story that was being told at that yeah. point kind of thing yeah it's, now this is meant to be what 60 years before the salem yes. witch trials so yes. that, i mean that's even just linking those two things mentally totally. is quite interesting because it, yeah. they talk about the history of so that um that scene where he was you know the Caleb was on the floor and possessed by something yeah that was taken from the court records of what was done in Salem 60 years after which was right. people sort of being afflicted by certain things or having voices or the, the blood on his arms the, the scratches and things mm-hmm. that was apparently yes. something that happened so yes. all of these the sort of confessions of witches that's what people did people got together where they grabbed their torch and pitchfork mm-hmm. and they they blamed all their problems on witches yes i mean do you think what do you think of the fact that this movie is that it does turn out to be about i mean it, as it turns out i mean it, again it lays its cards out on the table pretty early but that it is a film about a witch because i think you know with modern eyes when we want to look a tell a story about you know this era and salem and all that kind of thing you don't want the idea that oh, okay these women were witches and therefore they deserve to burn kind of thing you know like a lot of movies like witch finder general lend a more modern eye where it's like actually these witch finders are the horrible people yeah. the people the ridiculous accusers and interrogators and these women were innocent I think it links into more of the fairy tale idea. Yeah. Because you can either have witches with the humans as the problem mm-hmm. on one very clear side, or yeah. you can have humans with the witches as a problem. Mm. And if you stay on the humans with the witches as a problem, the idea of a witch and and the the idea that you have of that, you can still have a modern approach to that. You know, yeah. they've not they've got these traditional hocus pocus broomsticks. You no. Know? You have a witch in its purest form mm. in a nasty form kind of like when you read fairy tales and people tell you what the actual version of that fairy tale is yes. and you go this is the worst thing i've ever heard <laughs> exactly that you yeah, know exactly it's, that. it's that yeah it's it's the worst fairy tales yeah. made worse yeah. It's the fact that the witch she kills children mm-hmm. she flies in a broomstick at night she sends in her familiars mm-hmm. she comes in and does terrible things with the goats mm-hmm. all of these things happen and these are the worst possible things when you're out in the woods and it is dark yeah. and a witch is out there there's yeah. those scenes of just the walls of trees yes. and she is out there 
Yeah. And the when um, Caleb finds the witch's house. Oh God, that's scary. Under yeah. in these trees, under these tree trunks, these warped tree trunks, and because the film has been so grey and so black, and this beautiful woman, mm. this beautiful, but not just beautiful, but the lust of that scene is yes. quite extraordinary. The kind of the leg coming out the first. The legs, and, uh-huh, and yeah. like... The red that she's yes, wearing. it's absolutely that red cloak mm. and her the, the shape of her mouth and everything about her yep. is lust. Yeah. And you know that that's... You're just going to be, no, that's not, you, that's not, you can't see that. That's not what you can see. But yeah. obviously, because he's young and he's sort of growing up and suddenly mm-hmm. these are all his fantasies and all the rest of it yep. personified. And I think... All of these ideas of a witch are incredible because mm. it is the worst. It's oh, all the worst. It really is. And like I've always loved witches. I read Roald Dahl's The Witches, and it's my oh. favorite Roald Dahl book. And one of the best film adaptations Absolutely as well. Nick terrifying. Rose. Oh my god, so scary. So scary. There you wouldn't is... get a kids' film like that now. I no, don't I remember we watched we watched that in primary three. Mm-hmm. Our teacher put that on. She was terrible. That teacher. <laughs> And um, all the parents complained because we obviously all went home at age, what are you in your primary three, five, yeah. six? And um, we'd watched The Witches, which is a PG. I can't believe it's a PG. It's insane, isn't it's it? Horrific. It's horrific. When they, uh, the, the whole opening sequence where they tell the story of the girl who gets kidnapped in the alley and, and goes into the painting. The painting is That's, awful. It's what nightmares are made of, that, uh-huh. that story. And then isn't there's it? another lovely painting bit where Angelica Houston comes in and she's in the, the, the hallway of that hotel and she's yeah. sort of looking at the painting and she kind of just taps she it she taps it and the girl's gone oh my god yeah yes. I mean that's that, a whole other conversation yeah, whole other about convers- that film well, yes when you want to talk about that film oh 100% we will absolutely talk about that film and we will but, and, at, and at some point down the line I will obviously oh, it, it's such an interesting topic I think witches and I will do a whole yeah. series on witches yeah. obviously this one is a, is a tricky one and, and this and the Blair Witch they almost feel more like folk, folk stories than, than witch films yeah. but witch films are so diverse and obviously like you say well, you've got is it going to be a film where you're on the side of the witch? You know, you've got movies that are a bit more empowering, I suppose, like yes. The Craft and oh, those I kind of things. I love The Craft. Oh, you're gonna, I'm going to have a... <laughs> you're just going to have a field day. We'll just, it's fine. Yeah. We'll just talk about witches yeah. and we'll get Rosie in as well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. The Craft, you've got all that, that side of it and then you've got the more traditional, like, scary witches with hook noses and, yeah. you know, all of that kind of thing. You've got Buffy's um, idea of witches. I know we're not in film season, but you've got to think oh. about you got to think about Willow as well. Oh, yeah. With the flaying Absolutely. and the revenge. Yeah. Yes. It's a really interesting thing. I mean, what is it about witches in, in stories, do you think? I mean, I guess it feels like definitely with the witch, there's there's links to like feminism as yes. well when it comes to witch I stuff. I think the attraction of witches is sort of tenfold, isn't it? I mean, there's yeah. this sort of... I, we'll talk about it when we talk about the ending and the fact mm. that whether it's empowering or not. Mm-hmm. That's the question. So interesting. It's is fascinating, it, uh, that ending. It's the, it's the question of... Is it a happy ending? Are, yeah, yeah, is it a happy ending? But are what is a witch? And yeah. is um, is a witch anti-feminist? Because yes. it's the idea of men saying, well, she's evil because she's smart. Yes. Is, so it's questioning, or is it someone who sees power and takes it? Is it a powerful woman? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and But in this, it's very much this hag. Yes, which is an interesting which is way the to old, portray Which it. is the sort of very much the Snow White element mm-hmm. so it's that kind of fairy tale so I think you'll probably in your witch season you can break it all down and then we can have a nice d- definite idea of what a good witch and a what bad a witch, witch and in between is yeah. but I think in this the fairy tale the fairy tale element of that is, is definitely what we're yeah the focus of that is horror definitely nasty fairy tale definitely yeah 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 um, it is and, and, and the way that it's almost like like you say it's 60 years or so before the Salem Witch Trials it's almost like a kind of origin story of a witch, isn't yeah. it? Because because you you've got these old witch, these old crones that live in the woods. Yes. But then you've also got Anya Taylor Joy's character who becomes a witch at the end, and yeah. it's almost like it's this kind of weird self fulfilling prophecy where she's accused and accused and accused, and eventually she has no. She's like, well, f- fuck it, then. Yeah. You know, it's like, is was she? Would she have always done that? Or yeah. Did her father have to accuse her? Did her mother almost try to kill her? Did exactly. Her, and then there's the people that say, oh, was she evil all along? No. No, 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 definitely she, not. She she was made this way and then made the choice. Yeah. And which in some looked ways, attractive. It did, it did. <laughs> and and in some ways all of these other characters in the family are kind of they all have their flaws or they all, yeah. you know, quote unquote sin in some way or yes. another. Yes. Whereas 
Um, she does. In some ways, she doesn't really. She's no. just trapped in this awful situation, yeah. in this awful time. Yeah. I suppose it's like, what are the choices for women and someone of her age at that point? It's like, oh, you're either going to be sent away to a family yeah, or just to it. marry, uh-huh. uh, or There's... or if you're not, then you're a witch. <laughs> and you, well, you're here, and we'll make you do X, Y, and Z, and you'll yeah. we'll have to look after your brother and sister with no thanks. And yeah, th- I think that's where it's quite modern. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter that it's like being trapped being in your family and being trapped by what your expectations are yeah and her washing stuff down at the river and yes. all of these things and i think it is the expectations of a family mm. and it doesn't matter when you have that you know you could have that in 2018 with yeah. someone being like well you can look after the kids it's like well actually yeah. i don't want to look after my brother and sister i want to do something else like yeah. these are very real family dynamics <laughs> my lord my love my soul salvation take me to thy lap <laughs> but we briefly mentioned it but the the amazing moment where Caleb dies and he has what feels like some sort of exorcism he also seems to be it, in some at one point kind of you quite euphoric yeah, if not raptures. if not orgasmic or yes. something yeah. uh, just before he dies as well I mean what do you make of that whole sequence it's really incredible isn't it it's I mean as it's the sort of culmination of everything mm. being so wrong yes he's come back he arrived back you know naked and swooning all over the place in the yes. fence even the motions of the how he wasn't functioning as a human being yes. at that point was horrible he yes. looked like a doll he was broken yeah so when he's lying there in the in the attic space and i think you have them all together there mm-hmm. it's like the dining table sequences yes. yes only in the middle of this dining table is a is a yes. possessed child <laughs> yes <laughs> and um you've got the madness of is he is he going to be all right mm. but then you've also got whose fault is this yeah. And that's when they're starting to blame Thomason and it's yes. apparently her that's making the children not able to finish their prayer. Yeah. And that's before he coughs up this apple and you know all of that happens and the rapturous sort of ascension of him mm-hmm. which again I have completely in question. I don't believe mm-hmm. maybe it's the, something wrong in me that I don't believe that he was saved. Um, no, definitely. 100% he was not. he was absolutely not. Um he was fully the witches from from the get go. I think. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I think the idea you're watching that and it's bad enough, but then you also think about as a as a young actor doing that. Mm-hmm. I kind of simultaneously look at it, going, "Well, that was astonishing. That yeah. must have been so stressful." <laughs> How did they direct him? What did they ask him to do? Well, apparently they used lots of soccer analogies of how the right. emotion of his feeling during that. So they talked about Amazing. how he would feel in terms of football. That's really, I mean, great. That's brilliant. So apparently that was how he worked with it on his with his father. See, I, I that's, that. That, that is what you call good directing. Yeah, I read that and thought that's that's how you sort of relate that to something because it yeah. is so complex. It's so complex. There's I mean, about He's doing about three or four different things all at once, uh-huh. you know, with his face and his body. Yeah. The camera's doing weird things. It kind of goes up in the air and yes. comes down on him, you know, like a kind of weird God's eye view yeah, of him at one point. His spine arching. There's all of yeah. that going on as well. Oh so, I mean, as a scene, it's, it's astonishing. It's, it's, it is astonishing. It's kind of like the centrepiece of the film, really, yeah. isn't it? And it's at the halfway mark. But it's, um, it, it is weird. It's like, what what... Has the witch done to him? I get why she's killed the baby because she needs the skin cream. Fine, yeah. uh, she's pureed him. <laughs> um, but you know what's she done to the boy and why? You know, like why did she not just kill him there and then in the woods? Why did why she send, send him, him back? back and then why put him through whatever it was there that he went through? Is it all part of this grand plan to turn the family on each other so that they can yeah. see it happen? Or it would something? have to. You know, it's like sending. If he is possessed with something evil, yeah. If he is now a host to something, yes. Which, going by the very so when she kisses him, and it's the worst thing of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not a kiss. That's the transference yes. of something. Yes, and and that that evil personified that comes sort of sort of transferred through sort of lustful means. Yes, yeah. That the the kind of I mean, it's all very xenomorphy and sort of impregnation it is via very the mouth, xenomorphic. and it's all very someone's a host to something yes but it's the idea of passing on an evil mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and sending it back yes because that's how 
you know, that's that's how infection yeah. spreads. Yeah, you you're know, totally you, right. And that's how science works. Yeah. You send things out into the world and to infect more. He brings this thing into the house. He throws up that rotten apple and yeah, it's there. Yeah, he brings that into their house, mm. which hadn't been in the house before, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, it hadn't been inside. And now there it was, spat out and lying, mm. bitten yeah. there in the in the, the middle, the midst of them. What is this? And again, I f- you get the feeling from what little you get that I think Caleb is like the favourite, I think, of the kids. You yeah. know, he's a boy. He's going to be like the man of the house. Yes. Uh, you, you just get the feeling that his death affects them the most, you know. He's also would. very together. Yes. He's taking on responsibility. Yeah. He's not... Re- I, don't even, I don't see Thomason as rebellious, but they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah. see yeah. her as rebellious. No. I see her as wanting to please the family but also deeply pissed off by the way that everyone is really shit to her consistently (laughs) but he's this stalwart kid who looks simultaneously I think the casting of him he looks simultaneously like a child and a man he does I think there's a very definitive um, the way that everything around him is well everything around all of them is very naturally lit Mm -hmm. so they are apparently they use sort of natural lighting but to make they've obviously made very important decisions are makeup and how the children look and how how the shadows look on them so simultaneously look old and young yes so i think there's very clever direction around how those children are portrayed at points in the film Mm a hundred percent yeah and he is you know you see that he gets on well with Anya Taylor Joy's character, yeah. you know, as opposed to she constantly fights with the twins, he's kind of the middleman who's kind of, and you can see that the mum absolutely, obviously, adores him more than she does Thomason, and yeah. and same with the dad, you know. It's, There's yeah. a really sweet relationship between Thomason and Caleb, though. Yes, because exactly. Because it's quite sweet because when he comes down to the river and he's kind of going, he's feeling a bit confused, and yes. he obviously looks at her chest, yes. and obviously that's awful, yeah. but he knows that that's not right for him, but just yes. at the same time, she doesn't see that because no she doesn't see that in him and she doesn't see it in no. her so there's this kind of innocence to it and so she's like come here and she sort of drags him over and starts like mussing his hair and gives yeah, him a kiss and exactly. sort of plays with his ribs and there's just like it, that is actually quite a nice moment it, it is it's probably almost a nice moment it's it not is. quite almost, because there's yeah, something he's wrong still a boy with it. looking at his sister's boobs yeah, but, but you know but at that moment he's kind of forgotten that and he's a bit awkward but is <laughs> yes. there something childlike and innocent about that bit totally yeah and that's just before his mercy comes along <laughs> yeah mercy oh, yeah. with her little mercy. stick but again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good that's awful. so good but uh, yeah it's true and you know he's i suppose they all have their little like flaws almost they're all basically sins aren't they yeah. it's, his is lust yes. you know that's why he sees the witch as the sex woman you've got the dad who's basically yeah. pride he yeah. he refuses to kind of give up his piousness he refuses to come clean about the cup he sacrificed you know. his whole family for yeah. his beliefs effectively yeah. it is exactly. his fault you exactly. know it's that continued sh- returning shot of him chopping the wood yes which is what it, she wh- says is, is the only thing he's good at uh, as well yeah. rain or shine literally mm-hmm. rain it is yeah. it's like <laughs> you're not gonna light that mate that's not gonna no. light that wood that's not why you're there you're there swinging that axe swinging that axe swinging that axe it's like again there's that madness there it's like Jack in the Shining throwing that ball throwing that ball against the hotel wall over and over again and And, and actually it's scary somehow the the shots of him chopping wood creep me out because it's because you might at any moment that could be his children's neck under there you must tell me Thomason tomorrow I cannot keep secret of this a council will be called, and thy life is... thy life. Will you not believe me? I saw the serpent in my son. You stopped their prayers. They right? lie! I saw it. Caleb disappeared with thee. I love Caleb. Yeah, and who then found him? Pale as death. Naked as sin and witched. Yeah, I mean, I want to ask you about William then, like the the, the father the character, because he's really interesting as well, because I think, you know, I kind of remember first seeing it and automatically thinking, okay, he's going to be a horrible, horrible patriarchal yep. nightmare who's going to, you know, absolutely kind of create this hell for them. And in some ways he does, but he's also in some ways, I think he's got quite sympathetic sides as well. To yeah, him. the fact that he eventually does turn around and say, I took the cup. Yes, so, you eventually. Know, yeah. Eventually he does... <laughs> 
but he, I mean, his both his children can alive for him. His, Caleb's like, no, no, it was about the apples, mm. and he he clearly has desires for his family to succeed. Yes, and I think he's driven. He doesn't want them to suffer, mm. and especially the scene where he's fighting with fighting with his wife and being, you know, actually physically fighting with yes, her. Yes, Um Because he just wants the family to do well. Yes, in his own warped way, because yeah. he's so pious. Yeah. He's trying his best to do what he thinks is right, isn't he? But is, which is deeply but is really struggling. hypocritical as yes. well to his ideals. Yes. So it, his... his yeah. He's deeply flawed. He really is. Deeply, yeah. deeply flawed. Because, I mean, he's the one that takes them out there. I mean, yeah. why, we never really we, know, but why is it they, they get excommunicated, uh, they get exiled? Yeah, why are they removed? Where did they, Is it his... It seems to, it's totally him, isn't it? It's him. I wonder if it's got something to do with their, their absolute puritanicalness, or his, yeah. you know, the, yeah. that somehow... They've, they've, they've had enough of them, yeah. you know, as a family. I wondered, because the first time I couldn't remember if why they were excommunicated. Mm. But then the second time, it didn't make it any clearer. It doesn't really... You stay, stay along this path that you've yeah. chosen kind of thing. It's like, well, you've chosen something. What have you... Exactly. And I think it is the religion aspect, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I think it must be. But it is totally him, isn't it? He's the one that's created that world and that, yeah. you know, bred it into his children yes. as well. You cannot escape the world. I will find him. <laughs> and kill myself too. Well, John has been a man of the house. Will you damn all your family to death? Catherine! Let like, go of it! And what about, what do you think of Kate Dickey then, who's brilliant? Is oh, she excellent in everything she's she in, She is. I think. She's just, yeah. she is just amazing. Mm. Um, she is, again, someone who is so striking to watch at all times. Yes. You can't take your eyes off her. Yeah, she's got a really um, striking face, hasn't yeah, she? <laughs> she has an amazing face. Yes. I love Kate Dickey's face. I also follow her on Instagram. Mm. She takes lots of pictures of Glasgow. So in a, fan- in a Fanco on Instagram, I follow her on Instagram. I'm like looking at Glasgow and like, amazing. she's so cool. But no, in this, she is this, she suffers because she's been brought out there. Yes. And he di- seems to disrespect. I mean, she's the one that suffers when they go out there. She's the one that suffers when the baby is yeah, taken. Yeah, she suffers the most. She suffers the she? most. She yeah. is literally in bed crying yeah. because everything is being pr- progressively taken away from her. Yes. One child at a time. Yeah. And yeah, she has to burden all of that. And then it turns out, you know, the husband's kind of lying. Yes. And various things. Yes, so, and she really, she truly thinks that she's damned and yeah. that they're all going to hell as well, yeah. doesn't she? So it's, yeah. Well, she can almost see the truth there mm-hmm. in the fact that that family is damned. Yes. She's not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> You know, yeah. she sees the, the rot in the corn and she sees the fact that the baby's gone missing and mm-hmm. they know it's not a wolf. Mm. You know, that they say, oh, it's a wolf. It's not a wolf. No, exactly. She knows. Yeah. She's smart. There, there are so many moments. The, the the moment that really scares me the most is that kind of sequence where she wakes up in the night and she sees Caleb and the baby who are yes. dead by this point. And yes. it's like, oh, God, what's going on? Yeah. And meanwhile, over in the barn, the kids are all locked in with, with the, the goat. Witch. And the witch suddenly comes that in. That bit is horrifying. The noises around that. Oh the, my god! And yeah, the noises as she comes in, and comes fact, in through the roof or something, maybe like I, flies into the barn. Well, you, know? you never, because when you see the next day that the mm. wood has been pulled away, yeah. so you wonder if she just charged in. Yes, so that's also that's a thing. True. I didn't even think about it. He, I didn't even mention it. The the father just hammers them in. Yes, he does. Yes, yes. I mean, he he goes full crazy. He does. He goes full crazy. He and, does. Uh, locks his children in a barn, yeah. a tiny barn with the goats. Because at that point, they just don't know who's the witch, who's the devil, who, yeah. who's, who's who. Evil. So he just hammers them. We all, all go in the, the shed. The madness of <laughs> you know that we were talking about the shining earlier. Yes. So it's a very sort of. It's a very shining. It's a very shiningy moment. It but, is, and I think just the way that the tone escalates and that they all progressively go more and more mad. Yeah. You know, as this goes on, it's very shining, yeah. isn't it? Definitely. I was thinking about the, in terms of reflections of the shining. Obviously, we did got to discuss that before. Yeah. But the fact. Um, that opening as they go further into the woods is mm. basically the exact uh, same as the shot of the family travelling to the Overlook. Exactly. And it's got the same type of music and you definitely know not everything's going to be fine. So there's yeah. constantly these 
there are the more you think about it, the, the reflections with the shining are not mad. Definitely. And I think, you know, again that Robert Eggers has not said enough revealed much about this film, but it's interesting that he's he's suggested things like the hallucinate mushrooms and stuff yeah. because at like with the shining, you don't know whether it's these exterior forces. Obviously there are ghosts and stuff. Yeah. But actually, is it all about people going mad and being yeah. awful to people? And it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, there is a witch in this, but she's literally on the periphery and you only see her about three times. Yeah. And then what about all the stuff that this family are doing to each other, you know, within but, this but house? But when you do see her... Oh, my God. When she turns and <laughs>, laughs... So it's, it. the, it's the it's the it's the one two shot of the terrifying witch laughing, absolutely horrendous. And then jump cut to Kate Dickey breastfeeding the the raven. Uh-huh. Oh my god! Yeah, and so that's the thing that witches would be said to do. They send in familiars, and there's lots of discussion yes. around lactation and. <gasps> There's just, there is. There's just a lot. There's of, the milking there's a, the goat and blood a, coming yeah, out. There's a lot of nipple chat. Oh god. Really. Nipples in places. That's the thing that I think they talked about. Which I think uh, Robert Eggers talked about in folklore. There's yeah. lots of interesting bits to do with that. So it's almost like they didn't go as far into that as they could have done. No, it's the bit was the suckling the goat and the blood and just that blood falling out of the bucket trickling into oh, the hay. Yeah. There's something really horrific. It's just that. wonderful, isn't it? It's, it's so visceral and gross, and the way, yeah, like it kind of drips into the hay and the the, the yeah. soil and stuff. Um, but yeah, the bodily horror of uh, the movement with the with the bird was oh just. Oh my god, it's uh, really horrible. It's really. And she's laughing kind of maniacally as it's happening. Yeah, you know? it's like oh, that is yeah. <laughs> you can, the minute you know, you can still see that kind of pecking motion. Yeah, and you know, it's that kind of simple body horror. It all, really is. always the most effective. Absolutely. You know, it's it like really everybody is. has nipples. Yeah. You know, we yeah. all know what they are. And it's a real and, kind of, ooh, oh, you know. Yeah, it's the motion and the movement. Yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah. of like in horror films when there's a nail somewhere and you know someone's going to stand on it. Exactly. Or you've got a nail or a that's fallen nail. off. Mm. Yeah, something's being. There was one particular. Actually, there's one moment in, what is it? House of Wax. Yeah, it yeah, was out yeah. a long time ago with Paris Hilton in it, and yes. that shows my age. But there's a point where someone's trying to escape from a grating, yes, and they put yes. their fingers up through a grating, and someone has some pliers. And I still, yeah, when I think about body horror, I think about that one moment. It's these tiny, simple moments. Yes, and the in all of the madness of that scene, mm-hmm. in all of the witch and the goat and the children and the screaming and mm. the bird and the general madness. Mm-hmm. That a piece of body horror can still be so brutal, yes, that it gets you, yeah. And I think that's an incredible thing because you're yeah. being overwhelmed with everything. Everything is hitting you in the eyes, yeah. and the ears, and you are going for it. And you've either opted into the witch, or you are opting right out. Yeah, or you're out. And that's, yeah. it, that is the moment where you either go, "This film's incredible," yes. Or on your the other side of that, people yeah. just be like, "What is this? What is what happening? Is, what is happening here?" It's, but but it is, I suppose, one of the maybe few occasions of true horror, like Absolutely. horror film horror. Yeah, at condensed that moment. into one moment, yeah, like, a, like diluting juice of horror. Like yes. it would be the, the yes. concentrate yes. that you would water down would be that one moment. And I don't know which image I find more terrifying: the the laughing witch, or then the the, the Kate Dickey with the yeah. raven. It's all just so. It's all just. But it's a it's a double punch. It's a double you get punch. One, you get both of them. <laughs> And there after. is, like you say, there is these, isn't it? it's, it's all the sort of um, uh, links to the witch kind of um, accounts and all of that kind of yeah. thing, like the breastfeeding thing. Uh, that you, you get the feeling as well that, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> that there's a shot of when the baby is about to be sliced up and the knife goes straight for the genitals as yes. well. Oh. And you just think, oh my God, you know. And then it cuts. Yeah, and then it cuts. But it's Literally again, it's just, it's those body parts again where you're just like, oh, please oh. God, please don't, I don't want to see this. <laughs> yeah, I think know? I was quite... It's the fact in that you think you're saved by the edit. Yeah. You feel saved by the edit, but yeah. you're not. No. Because the next bit is the yeah. cute, the, the ground up stuff. Yeah. And that is Baby quite... Baby Nash. Yeah. yeah, that is quite evocative <laughs> and, and really disturbing. And also where I think a lot of people would watch and go, nope, this is not yeah, funny. Yeah, it's this really... Is not, I, I mean, I was thinking about it and obviously as I've got older, and I think we've discussed this before, mm. as we get older, horror films... Affect us in affect different us ways. in different ways. And I think... <laughs> That particular thing is evocative now for many of us, 
And yeah. I think, you know, I, I spoke to people that watched A Quiet Place and yeah. they found A Quiet Place particularly difficult because they have newborn children. Yes. And the idea of a baby that makes noise yes. in a world of nasty yeah. things that Stay get quiet. you, the things that make noise, mm. they found very disturbing and hard to watch. Yeah. Meanwhile, I mean, I don't have children. Mm. I can understand, but it's not as visceral for me mm. on, a, on an experiential level. Yes. And I think the first nine minutes of... Uh, the which are absolutely, you know, the, the, a quiet place is nothing in comparison to that. No, I it agree. It is I agree. grim. Yeah, it really it is. is. It I mean, really it is. is. It is grim. And also, I was looking at it in the fact that, like, not only does the baby die, the dog dies. Yeah. Mike, the dog dies. The dog dies. Yeah. So they the, kill the be- the animal and the the baby. They killed yeah. a good dog. Yeah. And you know they're all good dogs. Yeah. You're in <laughs> but unsafe. Hands. You are not safe. They're killing the animals. Hands. They're killing the children. This isn't good. It's not good. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, let's talk about the most important character. Let's, yeah, we haven't talked about him. Black Philip. So, because it's so funny, because there are shots of the goat throughout the film where you, you again, you're supposed to laugh. You know, there's yeah. like shots like they kind of talk about it. Like, is the goat really? Does the goat really talk to you? And there's just this face of this goat, and it looks like it's smiling. Yeah. You know, there's like close up of it and stuff. It's a smiley goat. And you, I think you're supposed to think that's a re- a ridiculous notion that the goat yeah. is really possessed, and it's not about the goat. It's about the witch. The goat isn't evil. That's yeah. that's these crazy c- characters getting crazy with their paranoia and believing these children. Yeah. But then the goat is evil. It's yeah. just that that that's a real again. It's a moment where you either completely lose half the audience or yeah. you don't. I think when the goat begins talking, yeah, you either sort of buy into the ideas of Baphomet. Yeah, of, you know, there's all these um, images of that. I think they probably took from images of witches and goats. And yes. I mean, it's weird because goats are strange. Goats are they these are strange, smiley. Yeah. There's a game called Goat Simulator that has <laughs> quite a similar. <laughs> <laughs> smiling goat as the main image for the for the uh, like oh the God, box art of Goat Simulator has a white version of Black Phillip yeah. smiling. So when I look at Black Phillip, I'm like, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're a goat, you're a <laughs> and goat. I think about that ridiculous game. But at the same time, it, there is a horror there because I remember we had goats when we were growing up, mm-hmm. and the male goats are really grumpy and angry and mm. violent. Mm-hmm. So they're, the violence of a, a sort of prancing goat with the kids running around yes. and that goat with its really serious horns and ridiculously solid head yes. can do a lot of damage. Yes. So when the when he sort of wrestles him into the sort of the cage, yeah. he falls, which is vaguely funny and the children yes, laugh the children at it. Laugh. But there is this layer of something, harnessing something wild. Mm. And goats are that. Mm-hmm. They, they look silly and they make strange noises, but they are that, and it doesn't matter that you can get a Funko Pop of Black Phillip. Yeah, you don't want to be in a room with an angry goat. No. What's the like the taste of butter? I think you know you could uh, everything up until that point. I mean, even that. I suppose you could argue that it's in her head, but everything up until that point, you could you could in some way rationalise it. Yes. That could just be a really crazy homicidal woman who killed the baby. Yes. You know, t- uh, Caleb might have um, eaten some crazy mushroom in yeah. the woods, and that's yeah, why he's the, having yeah, that. Yeah, the corn with the, the hallucinogenic yeah, corn. Yeah, and that's why he's having that freak out, and then yep. dies. You know, yep. and uh, and they all turn on each other. Maybe the goat genuinely just rammed the dad and killed him yes, because he's an angry goat. Angry goat. That's what. Yeah, they do. Uh, and so everything up until that point, you could still rationalize as yeah. oh it's not really satan or a witch it's it's this family or their yeah. own undoing kind of thing and then it's like oh no it, it oh no it is it is <laughs> it is absolutely the goal i cannot write my name i will guide thy hand you know what are your thoughts on the ending what did you make of the ending i think the first time i was like whoa okay yeah this feels like some kind of massive not it doesn't feel like a tonal change no but it was another step wasn't it Big it time. was another step it Big didn't time. matter we'd already seen the apple fall out of the mouth we knew there was supernatural elements at work that was yep. you know we'd seen someone a witch fly effectively at the start kind yeah. of yeah um but that was the point where it some people will say it jumped the shark i'll yeah. say it took its natural progression yeah yeah and i th- I, I like that mm-hmm. i like it when something I can't talk about another film I don't want to spoil it but I like it when something goes I am taking this stance Mm -hmm. and yes this is supernatural and you're going to have to believe it now yeah and I don't agree with anyone that goes no that becomes rubbish so I really like it and then and I love the idea of her 
walking in, you know, signing her life away to yeah. the devil, effectively. Yeah, for the taste after, of butter. For the taste of butter. I mm -hmm. mean, I love butter. Yeah. I fucking love butter. I would absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Butter's a luxury for those guys yeah. as well. It's I mean, like, look at the corn, you know. Yeah. I mean, that needs butter. That, that needs corn. butter. You need crumpets <laughs> yeah. and lots of butter. Yeah. Melted butter. I think absolutely. there's something quite evocative about that. Yes. About those selections. Not so much the pretty dress. But I think, do you like the taste of butter? It's great, isn't it? And it's, it's a great voice as yeah, well. It's all oh, the voice is incredible. It's I had wonderful. my sound bar on, mm -hmm. and I, you wonder how many different times and different takes. Yeah, they said they and just said the word butter over and over again, and yeah. they just does they like to live deliciously? And there's just this oh wow, it's booming as well. Uh, it is yeah, it's and there's um, a slight there's a there's a sort of a hiss to it as yeah, well. There's yeah, there's a evocative doesn't really cover yeah. that voice and the the shadow around her yes it looks like a looks man like then doesn't it not a, a goat man. yeah definitely a man mm -hmm. at that point and i kind of see him as the similar to the the the, the villagers at the start yes with the, you i don't know if i exactly. imagined that giant hat or what i saw totally. but there's still the sense of um i think there's probably multiple different ways that you could look at it but yeah. i see it in that sense of it's he becomes human this at man. that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, And he yeah. will guide her hand. She doesn't even need to be able to write her own name. Yeah. And then she walks into the woods. And that, and naked then, as the day she was born. Naked. And then you get that incredible shot of the, the, all these witches kind of yeah. around a fire and then a, a kind of ascending upwards and yeah. she's happy. Do we think mm. that they're flying mm. because they've made puree out of the twins? Oh, maybe. Because where are they? The twins must be dead, mustn't they? Yeah, the twins are... We don't find the well, twins. Well, we, we know so little about the twins because also are the twins part of it? Are, part, are they part of the plan? You know, because they've been talking to Black Philip yeah. throughout most of this film and they've been really kind of prodding the fire and getting yeah. uh, Thomason in trouble yes. wherever they can. They're, kind of. they're imps. They're basically yeah, imps. they are. They exactly. are imps. They are gremlins. Yeah, they've But been, they are gone. Yeah, they're gone. And you they are, all fly. They fulfilled their use, I suppose. That's yeah, it. And they all fly. They yeah. all fly. All of them fly. So mm. they must be covered in some stuff too. Mm -hmm. Though, because they are. <laughs> so funny isn't it because the ending again did you i remember there was a big thing about the film when it came out that it had been endorsed by the satanic yes, church they were like of yeah America. thumbs up guys um <laughs> which is really interesting because what because i think that the point they were making is that it's like it's actually showing it as a kind of well this is an empowering thing for women yeah uh look at the alternative look at living in christian society at this time you know yeah i mean what do you think of it what do you make of the just just the ending and what what does that mean you know what does that mean for thomas in all oh, the film i mean i find it very positive yeah uh, it's yeah. hugely positive and um everything in her family life was rubbish and yeah. she was being pushed down and pushed away mm -hmm. and you know belittled and instead she was empowered yeah and yes yeah, she had to sign her life away to the devil but mm. she wasn't held back by anything she was given the power of flight yeah these and it's it's not just the old hag no. idea of a witch it is these women who are singing and dancing and there's something powerful and there's chanting yeah. and there's the feeling of becoming part of something yes. and you are elevated as she is elevated literally as e as elevated. she ascends she yeah. literally ascends and she smiles yeah and that, it's her happy ending yeah, it, is. it is i mean it's it's like um yeah, it's like if if she hadn't made that choice, mm. I'd be really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And it's, 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 it's she's free, isn't she? That she's it's literally she's even free of the clothes, yeah. the restriction, yeah, the no restrictive restrictions. clothes. You know, yeah. are gone. Uh, and it's it's interesting, you know, that the only two moments really in the whole film when you see characters be truly happy are uh, her at the end and Caleb when he's about to die as well. Yes. They're the only two he's moments where you see too. characters look euphoric, and it's yeah. when they've they've succumbed to the devil, to basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like the, the only thing once you are in, uh, not in the safety 
-hmm. of humanity anymore yes is let the world eat you alive so you either stick with your beliefs like mm -hmm. the father and you get skewered yep. by a goat yeah you stick with your beliefs like the mother and you get hatcheted in the face by your own daughter yes the baby unfortunately didn't survive didn't long get enough much for any chance. of that it played peekaboo until it uh, that was awful um brilliant there was like a great kind of like what felt like a comment on jump scares or yeah, something yes. you know the fact that she's literally saying boo you know it's yeah. just brilliant yeah. yeah i think it's uh yeah anyone that resists that world and tries to keep what yeah. they grew up with yeah and even the discussion of glass mm -hmm. yeah we didn't talk so it's a really small little moment where she's like you don't remember glass oh i know in the yeah. windows and he's like oh, i remember this i remember that but i don't remember yeah and it was th almost the idea of the rejection of the old life mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rejection of everything before and how being in the forest is the only thing now he so he's like his father that way yes so i thought that was interesting the fact that she has this memory of everything the way it was before yeah and she clearly still has all those memories and all those associated dreams yes. which would come with that mm -hmm. but the forest is not that dream for her yeah exactly so she needs to escape that she, this is a life where she is imprisoned and she has her memories of a better life, mm -hmm. but is now stuck. Yeah, well, in it, the, the grim. It's kind of like it's something saying some. It probably saying stuff about America there as well, isn't it? I mean, you've got these people that have come over to this new land, this new of world, opportunity and freedom. Mm -hmm. But again, humans are fucked up, and they fuck themselves up. Basically, is what happens, you know. Yeah. And and, it, and you wonder how long the witch has been there, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, we are at that point. What that, I mean, the that point of. Uh, of America, mm -hmm. it's so it's so young. Mm, in the, in exactly, the, the, but it's um. So you wonder how long? Yes, she's there's been, been witches. There. Yeah. How long has there been witches out in those woods? Yeah, what have they been doing? What have they been eating? What have they been growing up? <laughs> Lots of babies. Yeah, I mean that's awful. I mean, do yeah. they even the associated idea of them, the safety of that village and why there was a gate that mm -hmm. was closed. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, that's interesting. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? And it's like, even though that that it is a happy ending, and that in some ways, yes, this life this life choice she's now made is positive for her yeah. because she's free. She will also have to keep kidnapping and mashing yeah. up babies. She, that's she the only also, downside. She will now be, you know, evil. But it's uh, it's uh, killing and mashing up babies and living as an evil hag in the woods is the better alternative than living in seventeenth century New England. Which you is know? worse. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's exactly. like when people choose to be a vampire. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Which always makes me really happy, but obviously damns then to an eternity of <laughs> blood drinking. Yeah, so. exactly, yeah. No, it's great. And it's. I think that's why, again, I find it quite... It's a shame when people are put off by the ending because I think you can... The film kind of has its cake and eats it. I think you can watch it as this like story of just an evil witch killing a family, but you can yeah. also see it as, well, look at... It's all about how people destroy themselves, yeah. really, and how they're the ones that lead to her becoming yeah. the witch, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty... It's escaping your own prison of life. Yeah. What is your favourite... What's your scariest moment in the film, would you say? Um... I would say now the bit in the uh, in the barn in the tiny barn. Yeah, that when she is... turns around and the laugh. Yes, it's because the laugh. Because that's where it just topple, topples into oh my God. into madness. Because that to me now, had I not been with that whole expectation thing, mm -hmm. the first time around that would probably have killed me. Had yes. I not been thinking about where's this scary bit? So, yeah, where's the witch? Where's the actual <laughs> witch? But now I watch it and I'm just like, that's too much. That's, Holy shit! That's too yeah, much. yeah, yeah, totally. Poor Kate Dickey. Because I remember when I first saw this and I was watching Game of Thrones at the time. I was catching up on Game of Thrones and I'd just been watching whatever series it was where Kate Dickey is in it as the kind of crazed aunt. And there's this first scene you series in which she's ba uh, she's breastfeeding a yeah, like she's got a breastfeeding scene nine in that year too. old boy or something. Yeah, she has yeah. a breastfeeding scene. And in I was that like, too. this is just Kate Dickey's thing. She just breastfeeds inappropriately. <laughs> she's a Mike actually it's funny my i interviewed anya taylor joy yes for morgan because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's very good at playing sort of ethereal other yep. characters yeah yep, yep. and um she i was interviewed it was a phone interview and she was lovely and so smart and i could have just talked to her forever but the more she talked to me the more scottish her accent sounded oh and i said i said at the end of the conversation i was like are you scottish she's like no i just i always parrot people's accents and Amazing. you remind me of my friend kate dickie Oh, there and I was go. like, "Oh, this is the actual best." And oh, she's like, amazing. "Yeah, from when we weren't the, or in the witch." And I was like, "I know, I know, I I'm know. with you. I know. Believe I've me, seen it. believe me." I wanted because all, <laughs> all I wanted to do was ask her about the witch. Of course, the whole phone thing. I was like, oh, "Morgan, I I, Morgan's fine, but I just want to talk to you about I the know. witch." No, I think I had that. I interviewed her with Split. Okay, and I think again, I was like, 
Do Just I like, get time I, for a witch question? Can I have a Thomason question? Because <laughs> yeah. that's a good thing. I know. But no, Incredible. she's amazing. Absolutely yes. amazing. Um, she's she's going to become a big star, isn't she? I mean, she's yeah. popping up in everything at the moment. She, oh, I, I mean, I loved her in uh, Thoroughbreds. Oh, it's a great film. Yeah. Thoroughbreds is great. Great, great, uh, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, like very different roles each time as well that she plays, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, well, final question then. What's your favourite folk horror? Do you have one? Oh, oh, the Blair Witch Project. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, it has to be the Blair Witch Project. I yes. mean, j- the very idea of, I think I saw that the first time when I was 14 or 15, and it's not it's not got out of my head since. I've it's seen incredible, it. I must have it? seen it. 15, 20 times. Yes, and it, it, it never... Um, again, again, something I don't understand is when people go, oh, well, once you know it's real or when you watch it a second time, it loses no. its novel. No, no. No, it's like, no. have you ever been to the woods? Yeah. Have you ever heard a noise that you can't explain? Yeah. Like, even the idea of watching that and straining your ears... For can you hear something? Can't you? Can you see stuff? I was uh-huh. talking about the Rosie, and I, I even paused it in moments rewatching it again because I was like, "What is? What is that? It's in the package outside the did, tent." Did you we know, decide but... if it was teeth or nails? Are they we teeth or said nails? teeth, I, yeah, think, I think, but, it's but wrapped I don't. up in his shirt. Oh, oh it's so good, <laughs> it's and the, so good. the ending in that house. It's that just house, the best because it's almost like folk horror takes you away from reality, mm-hmm. and that takes you to a house and a house is meant to represent safety yeah. and home and everything that you need and but it you, takes you back there and it takes you into a basement and it does things to your brain and then you leave that cinema or you turn off the light and you cannot think about anything else no about and, somebody and, stood in a corner of your yeah, bedroom facing the other way yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely my favorite the folk horror movie incredible movie yeah uh thank you so much for joining me once again it's no, so it's lovely to have you back so good um where can people find you if they want to find you you know you you do so many things but is it easier well, to just find you on find social media Twitter. Mm. Uh, shiny underscore demon is where you'll find video games and movies and tech that's where you'll find me and horror all the horror and horror fantastic thank you very much thank you And that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. And of course, once again, a big thank you to my brilliant guest, Louise Blaine. Wonderful to have Louise back. And I'm sure, no doubt, she will be joining me again in the next series. So, what do you think of The Witch? Do you love it? Do you hate it? I know it's a movie that divides people. If you hated it, have we in any way changed your opinion? Or have we made you hate it even more Uh, get in touch the email address is evolutionofhorror at gmail.com you can find us on twitter at evolutionpod or on facebook that's facebook.com slash evolutionofhorror Uh, don't forget there is also a discussion group you could talk about the witch or any other horror movies or anything you like in fact with other listeners that's the evolution of horror discussion group and that can be found on facebook don't forget you can find this podcast on all major podcast platforms including itunes stitcher podbean libsyn and if you get a chance please do hit that subscribe button please do spread the word about us to your friends and family and if you haven't done so already drop us a little rating or review preferably a nice positive one um we will be forever grateful and it does give the podcast a boost it helps it get discovered by new listeners and it's also something that's very lovely to read uh so on to next week then where do we go from here we are already up to 2015 well actually there's still quite a lot to cover now next week is going to be a bit of an unconventional episode we are going to be looking at where the evolution of folk horror has led us in 2018 and something you might remember us discussing a long time ago on the very first episode we mentioned that there's a lot of folk horror in this day and age that's actually ventured away from cinema and into the world wide web next week i am going to be joined by a brand new guest an absolute digital guru called Alex Ailing, and together we are going to be discussing internet folk horror, such as creepy pastors and marble hornets. Now, we won't be talking about any of these in spoilery detail because they are quite long and sprawling and bitty, and we won't expect you to have watched them all for next week. But on top of that, we are going to include a film review. Now, one of the most famous internet folk tales is one that probably most of you have heard of. It's something that appeared on the internet in memes and mobile phone videos and that kind of thing. A terrifying looking creature known as the Slender Man. Well, as you may be aware, there was actually a film of the Slender Man that came out this month. Some would argue perhaps a little bit too late. I think they may have missed the boat uh, in terms of its popularity. Uh, But there you have it. It's quite handy for the podcast because it just happens to coincide with our internet folk episode. So me and Alex will be discussing the Slender Man. We're going to do a spoiler free review and then we may do a spoilerific section at the end so next week it's going to be internet folk horror 
and The Slender Man. Join us then for all of this and more on the evolution of horror.